So why have you been starting fires? Well, that was the uh, dead ghosts. That, the, the prickly stuff that I've um, burnt so I don't get prickled. I've got to dig that out now. It's a bit ironic in a sick sort of way that I'd only just been joking with Sean about starting fires when what happens but well, an actual fire engine comes up the road. Where we live, there's barely a couple of cars a day come up here, never mind a fire engine. So I had to walk around the path to see what was going on. I don't want to sound like a Billy Joel record, but we didn't start the fire. It actually began about a quarter of a mile away, but it very quickly spread out of control up the hillside, burning through all the thick, dense gorse bracken and heather. At this time, the fire was covering about half a square mile of land on the hill, but the breeze was fanning the flames upwards and slightly across the hill. And it didn't help that everything was so tinder dry because the last couple of weeks has been pretty warm and we've not seen much rain. Wildfires aren't uncommon here in the Highlands and it's not unusual to see patches of heather being burned like this, but this wasn't a controlled fire and it was spreading rapidly. The firefighters split into groups and they use a well-rehearsed plan to tackle the blaze. There's no way to get fire engines up the hill here and there's no water supply or pumps, so they have to rely on other ways to control the fire. One of them is the fire beater, which is basically a big industrial piece of rubber on a stick, and they literally beat out the flames with it. It's hard work, especially when you're working right next to the flames in a heavy protective suit, but when they're working as a team up along the line of the fire, it's really effective at slowing its spread. Another piece of equipment is the FAFU, or Forced Air Firefighting Unit, as the fire service call it. It's basically a leaf blower, and firefighters have been using them in America since the 1960s. They work by cooling and diluting the gases around the fire so that they won't ignite, and the speed of the air forces the other flammable gases away. They have to be careful though, because it can also blow burning embers into other flammable areas, and it can have the opposite effect of actually starting new fires, so the wind direction and training is essential for using these. After about three hours, the fire had spread out into this ellipse shape and it was covering just over a square mile of the hillside. The teams of firefighters were doing a fantastic job and with a bit of help from the breeze, they'd managed to keep the flames away from the houses lower down the hill. Don't get me wrong, it was still burning fiercely through all the dried out heather, the bracken and the gorse and you could see the smoke from miles away. After about five hours, the firefighters were grouping together and they were starting to follow the ring of fire up the hill with the beaters and blowers and they were gradually extinguishing it. By about seven o'clock, I think it looked like they'd finally got it well under control. You could see some smouldering and smoke, but it was from way over the top of the hill. I think it had been a long afternoon and they were exhausted, but it looked like the worst was over. Well, it's about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, that started about a kilometre that way about nine hours ago. Was, I think it was about just after lunchtime it started. The worrying thing is, is that we're actually on our own land. Our house is like uh, 10 feet in front of me and you can see how close the fire is and it seems to be coming down the hill. It was right at the top of the hill, if you remember the hill. Well, now it's coming down the hill 
and it's not far away from us there's another house just between us and the fire the scary thing is is that the four fire engines have gone and I don't know <laughs> who's keeping an eye on it or what This is the weird thing, it's uh, nearly 11 o'clock at night and normally where we are there's no street lights or anything, there's no houses around us so it's, it's literally completely dark, you can't see your hand in front of your face and here I am and you can see the barn behind me and the whole of our land is just lit up from, from the, the, the light from the fire which is uh, literally meters in front of us. Uh, the emergency services have, have come back and you can probably hear uh, fans and equipment and pumps and things working so uh, they're trying the best but the wind seems to have changed and it was coming in one direction this afternoon the winds basically turned and it's now going in the opposite direction it's now blowing across the hill in the opposite direction but it's coming further down which is why it's putting us at danger and the properties behind us uh, so fingers crossed So as a precaution we've uh, now just got some hose pipes ready. I know these are not going to be much use against that but we've got to do everything we can. Uh, three or four fire engines are now on scene again uh, so we've got the hose pipe uh, which is extended uh, through another one. Some neighbours have brought some round and hopefully that won't come any closer. Well it's way after midnight now and it's weird how the fire goes because the wind keeps changing direction a little bit so one minute it's going across the hill the next minute it's coming down the hill towards us and the most frightening bit was we have some woods at the side of our property and there were just thousands of embers just coming across from the fire on the hill and landing in the woods and with the land as, as dry as it is uh, the gorse goes up like a firework and that's what we were scared of that it was just going to start a fire in the woods next to our property one of the fire engines of got rid of the fire that was nearest our house which was only a couple of hundred meters away but it seems to be springing up again uh, just on the other side of the hill again uh, which is where it started again earlier this evening and then spread across that way but it seems to be coming up again on that side uh, and there's a couple of properties just over there which it is getting a little bit close to so fingers crossed the fire service which are already up there are going to be able to deal with that It's now just gone one o'clock in the morning so it's been blazing for over 12 hours yes and it's weird because it looked like about tea time yesterday that they had it under control so it went out it literally went out it, it looked like they got it out and then it was early evening uh, we noticed it just starting over sort of where my right shoulder is and then it just 
And, and it's terrible because it went like crazy. We were worried and then we feel selfish because we're worrying about our property and it's also affecting other properties and uh, some of the, we, I mean, we call them neighbors. They're, they're like half a mile to a mile away, but they're neighbors to us and, and good friends already. And, and, yeah. and we all kind of congregated here at our place because it was the safest place for the time. And we felt guilty for feeling scared because their properties and their belongings were in jeopardy as well, weren't we? It's, yeah. It's weird. Uh, if you see a shadow on Sean's head, it's the shadow from the light on the camera. Uh, I mean, I want to say it looks like the worst of the danger is over yeah. for us and, and the neighbouring homes. Fingers crossed. But we said that earlier on and, and then it just, it just came back again. I think the good things are is that there's three or four fire engines on site again. Uh, the wind just seems to have dropped away. It's completely dropped now. Uh, which is stopping it. It doesn't look as wild when you look at it in the background. It doesn't look as wild as it as it has been doing. Uh, but oh, it's what a day! What well a day and a night. Day and a night. And I'll tell you something. We have never been brought closer to our neighbours. <laughs> I think ever in our lives that's right yes as we have today I mean we got on with everybody and, and introduced ourselves and we all got to know each other when we moved here but tonight wow it, it just shows how it can bring people together Well, it's the next, well, it's not the next day, it's the same day. It's the isn't same it? day as we went to bed. We went to bed about three o'clock in the morning, but didn't sleep very well. Uh, the firefighters were here through the night, and the blaze is still going. It's about a mile to our, I nearly said starboard side then. Starboard old, side? Old habits. Hold up. It's, it's travelled a fair distance. It's about a mile to our right hand side, just going around the other side of the hill. The smoke's just drifting across the valley. Uh, we're on the extreme left hand side of it. Uh, we're not in danger in case anything starts up again. There's a road literally behind you, so we can make a getaway. And we're not in the way of the emergency services. Uh, and if you're wondering about the drone footage, we checked with the emergency services before we sent the drone up. There was no <laughs> aircraft or restrictions or anything. Uh, so we were absolutely fine to do that just so that you're happy and don't nag us. Yeah But as for the hill itself <laughs> Not much left of it. No, there isn't. This used to be full of gorse or wind as they call it bracken. Uh, And bracken and trees and heather and moss. Yes, and it's it's literally all gone when you when you kind of kick the floor It is just ash and black and, dust and the soil. It's all gone. I mean it will come back. Oh so easily as, as bad as it looks now uh, and in some cases, when a fire swept through like this, when it does grow back, the ecosystem can actually be more productive than it was before. Because yeah. all the old growth, and there was years and years of growth up here, it was very thick. Because uh, it's all gone, it's like a fresh, what's it called? Start. A fresh start. No, a clean sheet. A clean sheet. There you go, we need to wash our bedding as well. <laughs> uh, different story. <laughs> Now the wildlife, I know some of you will be worried about the wildlife. We've seen the deer this morning down in the lower fields. Yes. They're okay. As for nesting birds, apparently uh, there is a date of the 15th of April for people to be burning land. This wasn't planned, this was an accident by the way, Yes. Uh, that got out of hand. Uh, but apparently it's just missed kind of the, the main nesting season, so hopefully it might have damaged or burnt away some of the nests that were being built. They'll uh, have to start again elsewhere. Yeah, but it shouldn't have destroyed any eggs or anything, so it's, hopefully. it's happened just before the main part of the season, which is good news. And it covers a massive area. Uh, it's a few square miles. Yeah, I, I took the drone up again this morning and you can just see the, the amount of land that has burnt away, it's, uh, it's quite sad to see, but hopefully it will grow back. Soon. What are the bees going to eat? Because we promised them acres, oh, last we, week we promised them acres all that of heather. heather. Yeah, and now... I'll plant some daffies. Daffies. <laughs> I'll plant some daffodils. Right, we're off for a cup of tea now.
It's been a weird 24 hours. Very strange. We've had us a cup of tea, by the way. Yeah, we yeah. didn't think you'd need to hear Sean slurping. <laughs> hear enough of that up there. In the, anyway, enough about Shh. that. Uh, the fire is out, we think. All the fire engines have gone. We've said that twice, though, already in the last 24 hours. And then look what happened. Woof. 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 Uh, but it does look all right. There's no smoke coming across us now. The ashes no. settled down. What an experience. Yeah. It's brought us together with the community and the neighbours a lot more. We, it has. we were all stood here in our garden last night watching it. That's how close we were getting. Yeah. And a couple of them had all the belongings in the back of a van. <laughs> That's how scary it was. That's, it got that close to the house. I think it's made us realise how vulnerable we can be out here. I mean, we, we were going to show you building our, well, the chicken's new house, the chicken coop. But that's going to have to wait, so you'll have to wait till next week now for that bit of gobble-gobble going on, won't there? <laughs> oh no, that's geese, isn't it? What are you thinking that's of? turkeys! Is it turkeys? What do geese do? Scream, don't they? No, it's like a honk, isn't it? Honk, <laughs> honk, honk, honk. We should remember that, shouldn't we? We had enough of that on the canals. Yeah, so not, maybe not so much gobble-gobble next week. <laughs> Maybe a bit of... <laughs> and then we'll get some chickens. <laughs> Can you imagine us two putting a chicken coop together? It's going to be like something from... Not smashy and nice you, what am I thinking of? <sighs> not little and large. <laughs> Ale and pace. The generation game. No, not that one. Uh, Chuckle Brothers, that's the, the Chuckle one. Chuckle Brothers. That took a while to, 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 <laughs> to tick in, didn't it? Our, our American viewers will have to Google that one. <laughs> get on Google. Uh, we hope you have found this week's vlog... Uh, interesting. Interesting and informative. I'm not going to say entertaining because it's it's been a bit scary and uh, people could have been hurt and property could have been damaged. Uh, luckily, I think we've got away mostly unscathed. A bit of scorched fencing and things like that and a couple of houses are full of smoke, like ours. Uh, but it will be right. Nobody yes. got hurt and that's the main thing. Uh, if you are not already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button and hit the notifications bell and YouTube will let you know every time, sorry it's getting a bit bright, every time we release a new episode. Yes! Which is every Friday at four o'clock. That was my line. Sorry, we're not doing it all again now. <laughs> uh, take care of yourselves and uh, we'll see you next week for hopefully something a little bit more entertaining. Take care of yourself, bye-bye. ta -ra.